Hello, and we are starting a unit on our geography basics. So, just to jump right into this, we're going to be going over the next couple weeks some basic geographical features, things you need to understand and know that when we get into our history part of this class, we're going to be referring to. Um, we're going to get into basic geographic terms like latitude and longitude and east and west and those kind of things. But we really have to hammer those fundamentals down. And one fundamental that surprises me, um, that seventh graders, a lot of them don't know the difference. And it surprises me is they don't know the difference between a continent and a country. So let's just start with this very basic concept, continent and country. First off, a globe is a three-dimensional scale of the model of the Earth. And I want you to look at Africa on this globe, and you'll see Africa is huge. It's a large landmass, right? Very distinctive on that globe. By the way, a map is a flat representation of the Earth. Now, first off, which is more accurate, a globe or a map? Yes, it's a globe. Maps are never 100% correct. Never. There's something wrong with every map you ever see. And it's for a very real basic reason. Um, the Earth is not flat. It's round. It's a sphere. But a map shows... Um, has a lot of advantages. First off, if you're looking at a globe, let's look back at that globe. Can you see the whole world? Nope, you cannot see the whole world. You can only see half of the world at a time. And a map, if we wanted to see the whole world, a map, we can actually look over the whole world at one sitting. Um... Also, a map you can fold up and put in your pocket. Um, there's all kinds of little advantages for having maps. That being said, understand a map is never 100% correct. All right. A continent is one of the several large land masses on Earth. Most geographers agree that there are seven continents on Earth. Seven. Again, the emphasis is large areas of land. Large areas of land. Larger than islands. North America, South America, Australia, Antarctica, Africa, Asia, and Europe are large land masses. Now, what is an island? An island is a piece of land smaller than a continent that is completely surrounded by water. Now, contrast that to a continent. A continent is one of Earth's seven large land masses. So, an island cannot be a continent. An island cannot be a continent. And that sounds like, well, that's common sense, of course. Yet people will refer to Australia as the island continent because it's completely surrounded by water. But that is not correct. You'll hear that terminology, but it's not correct. Australia is not an island. Australia is huge. If you were to superimpose Australia and put it over top the United States, Australia north to south would stretch from Montreal, Canada in the north, all the way down to Cuba in the south. It would stretch across the United States east and west. Australia is a large landmass. Most of the time on map projections, the southern hemisphere appears smaller than the northern hemisphere. There's a reason for that. We'll get into that later in the year. But it makes Australia look much smaller than it actually is. Australia is a continent. Some people confuse peninsula with an island as well. A peninsula is a piece of land surrounded by water on three sides, 
but not on all four. So in other words, it juts out into the water. And the isthmus is a narrow strip of land separating two large bodies of water. Okay, like the isthmus of Panama. So what... I want you to look at this map again and look at the seven large land masses. And the largest one is Asia. If you find Asia, Asia is the biggest. The second largest land mass is Africa. And Africa is not a country. I hear people say it all the time. I know somebody that lives in that country, Africa. Africa is not a country. It's a continent. You live on the third largest land mass, North America. South America is the fourth largest land mass. You go all the way down to the southern hemisphere, the very southern part of the southern hemisphere, you will see Antarctica. Europe is the sixth. And then Australia is the seventh. I want you to look to the east of Australia, and you'll see an area that is referred to as Oceania. Some people will try to teach that Oceania is a continent. It is not a continent. It's what we call a super region. A super region is, a, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a region that's very, very large, that has characteristics in common. And in this case, it's islands in the Pacific. Now, there are a lot of islands in the Pacific, but they are not large land masses. Remember the definition of a continent is one of the Earth's large land masses. Some people will try to teach Oceania as a continent, and it just, it just simply isn't. Australia is the continent in this region. Oceania is a super region. It is not a continent. By the way, on a side note, there's also five oceans. So, in the very northern part of our planet is the Arctic Ocean. You have the Pacific, Indian, Atlantic, um, and the southern oceans. Those five oceans, you need to know those as well. And again, you live in North America. All right. If you are watching this on your iPad, I want you to trace North America. There you go. Trace it just like that. South America looks like a letter S is almost like a... And so that's a good way to remember South America. Okay. Australia looks like a mama kangaroo with her joey in her pouch. You see it? Kind of cool. Antarctica literally looks like an ant crawling across it. So there's Australia and there's Antarctica. Uh, a lot of young kids actually get these two confused when they're just seeing a picture of the continent itself. And the easiest way to remember it is Antarctica. Think of that peninsula there as an antenna. Europe has a nickname. It is called the Peninsula of Peninsulas. It is its own landmass, but it also is a peninsula jutting off of a supercontinent of Eurasia. That's Europe and Asia combined. And then if you look at the continent of Europe, it also, you, something that should stand out is there's all kinds of peninsulas jutting off of it. So you have the Iberian Peninsula in the southwest where Spain and Portugal is. And you have the Crimean Peninsula in the Black Sea. And you have the Scandinavian Peninsula in the north. And then you have uh, Jutland, which literally juts off of Germany. And uh, you have the Balkan Peninsula in the southwest corner. And in the, in the south central part of Europe, you have Africa probably one of the most famous peninsulas in the world. And remember, a peninsula is a piece of land surrounded by water on three sides. And this peninsula is the Apennine Peninsula. Most of you probably know it as the Italian Peninsula. And that boot 
should tip you off that there is Europe. And the Renaissance, which we'll study about later, it will start in this peninsula. So that's an important peninsula for you to know later in the year. A lot of people think Asia looks like an Asian butterfly. We'll go with it. Um, when I write cursive, I don't make my T's and F's like most people. My T's tend to look like a curved number seven. And my F's tend to look like a curved number seven with a slash through it. It looks like almost like a backwards printed F. And Africa, if you look at it, kind of looks the same. Okay, so that's a good way of remembering Africa. So let's name these continents. What continent is this? Australia. How about this continent? It's the one you live in, North America. How about this continent? That's right, that's backward F. Africa. How about this continent? There's your Asian butterfly, right? Asia. Letter S, South America. How about this continent? Antarctica. And how about this continent? Europe. Very good. There's that Italian boot. And where does the ant go? That's right. It goes on Antarctica. Very good. All right. Did you know that most of the Earth is covered with water? So the land masses, all the land mass together, all the continents and islands, they only account for 29.2% of the total surface of the Earth. The other 70.8% is covered by ocean. All right, I want you to look at this map. One of these pictures is in the wrong place, and I did it on purpose. Does anybody know where it is? That's right, it's the ant. The ant does not belong on Alaska. It should be in this very southern part where Antarctica should be. Okay. However, I did that on purpose. And there's a reason for that. How many of you have ever seen, like, at Christmas time, where it's like Santa Claus and his reindeer and the polar bears and the, and the Eskimo Inuit people and penguins? In like a Christmas scene. I've seen them before. Christmas penguins. And of course this is supposed to be where Santa Claus lives. At the North Pole, right? There's just one little minor huge problem with this. Um, there are no penguins in the Northern Hemisphere. Penguins only live in the Southern Hemisphere. And even though penguins live where it's cold. Namely Antarctica. There are no penguins in the Northern Hemisphere. That's half a world away, literally. It's as far from the North Pole to the South Pole as it is from here to Australia. I mean, they're, they're nowhere near each other. Um, and so you have this concept of polar bears and penguins living together and... Maybe even some people think of polar bears hunting penguins. Well, polar bears only live in the northern hemisphere. So penguins and polar bears don't live in the same area. They, they just don't. Um, so I threw that in there to throw that little fact in there. All right, so can you name the continents on this map? You should be able to name the continents and recognize them without the names on the map. If you can't do that, this particular map here, use it as your study guide. You should be able to point to all seven continents and name the continents. You should also be able to point to all four oceans, excuse me, all five oceans, and, and name them even if the map doesn't have it. By the time you're in seventh grade, you should be able to recognize the continents by sight. And you should have something called relative location. Relative location is understanding where a place is in relation to another place. So, for example, I, the United States is on the continent of North America. 
you should be able to have that concept. Okay? If not, this is something you're going to have to work on. Because moving forward, it is a, a skill that you need to have. Not just for school, but for life. Talking about a skill for life is knowing the difference between a continent and a country. And people get them confused. And it, I don't understand why, but they do. But you have to understand that a continent is a physical feature. The earth has continents. The earth will still have continents if people are not around. Okay? The earth had continents before people existed. It's part of the Earth's structure. Countries are a human concept. A country is a nation that occupies a territory of some kind. And all the area in that territory is under the control of a particular government. For example, you live in the country of the United States. So, within the territory of the United States, the 50 states, the government in Washington, D.C. is the supreme government of those 50 states. That's what a country is, plain and simple. Now, in Washington, D.C., they can pass a law, and it's in effect for all 50 states. However, that law, if they pass a law... It doesn't go in effect in Mexico, right? Okay. And here's what's also important. The land doesn't have to be connected. It doesn't have to be connected. For example, when we go to Oceania, you have blocks of islands that are under the control of a government. And they aren't touching each other. Um, Russia has what's called... By the way, when you have a piece of a country not attached to the main body of the country, that's called an exclave. Russia has an exclave that is not connected to the main body of Russia called Kaliningrad. Uh, it is separated from the main body of Russia uh, by the countries Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, the Baltic countries. Um, in Africa... There is a country called Angola, and there is an exclave called Cambindia that is not attached to the main body of Angola. It is separated away from the rest of the main body of the country. Now, before you say something like, well, that's stupid, who does that? Well, you live in a country that has two exclaves. What are the two exclaves of the United States? That's right, Alaska and Hawaii. All a country is, is a nation with its own government, and it occupies a territory, and that government is controlled, is in control of that entire territory. It is not a permanent land feature. Countries' borders change through time. Countries are a human concept. They are a political concept. So continents are on a physical map. And you're going to learn later on the difference between a physical map and a political map. A political map is basically showing the boundaries between countries. All right, here are the countries of North America. The three main ones are Canada, the United States, and Mexico. You also have the Central American countries as well. Here you have the countries of South America, Brazil, Bolivia, Paraguay, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, and Suriname. And France? Yes. French Guyana is not a separate country. It is a prefect of France. In other words, it's an exclave of France. So when you're in French Guyana, you're in France. Pretty cool. All right, here's Europe. Uh, I hear a lot of people, they'll talk about countries around the world, and they refer to Europe as one country. Europe is not one country. It's many countries, as you can see here on the map. 
Okay. There were two countries that straddle Asia and Europe. Look to the eastern side of this map and you'll see Russia and Turkey. And when we flip over to the other side, there you see Russia and Turkey again. Russia and Turkey are countries that are on two different continents. In fact, Russia's land mass is actually, if you include the Asian side and the European side together, is actually more square mileage than the land mass of Europe. That is something to keep in mind. Okay. This is Africa. I want to point out right away, I want you to look. And if you're looking and paying attention, there's many countries in Africa. Africa is not a country. Get that through your head, okay? It's not a country. However, Africa has a lot of countries, and it is a continent. This is Antarctica. And I want to point out something here. Antarctica doesn't have any countries. Unless you live in Argentina. Argentina tries to claim the uh, Antarctic Peninsula. That would be the antenna of the ant that we talked about earlier. But all the other countries of the world say, nope, you don't get to claim Antarctica. There's a tree amongst most of the countries of the world that, that makes it clear that Antarctica can never be claimed as a country. All right. So we just looked at a continent with no country. Now we have a continent and a country with the same name, Australia. And so I want you to really look at this map. And the answer is going to be one of three things. It's either going to be the continent is larger, the country is larger, or they're both the same. Which is larger? The continent of Australia or the country of Australia? Study this map. All right. This is the exception to the rule. The country of Australia is larger than the continent. And you're going, okay, how can that be, Mr. Sprague? Okay, the continent is the main land mass. That's the large land mass. So the continent of Australia is that large land mass. Now the country of Australia is this entire picture. And I want you to look to the south eastern corner, south of Victoria. You have an island that is called Tasmania. Now Tasmania is part of the country of Australia. It's a state of Australia. It is not on the continent, is it? It isn't. So literally, the country of Australia is larger than the continent of Australia. And I point this out for a very important reason. People will tell you that when they answer the question, what's the difference between a continent and a country, they'll say something like, countries are smaller than continents. That's a wrong answer. That's a wrong answer. So listen carefully. Because this will be an essay question on your next test. I'm flat out telling you now. Here's the answer. When you get the question, what is the difference between a continent and a country? The answer is a continent is a physical geography trait, whereas a country is a political geography trait. A continent is a large landmass. It's one of the seven large land masses on planet Earth. A country is a territory under the control of a central government. There's your answer. That's it. Okay? It's not countries are smaller than continents. Because when we just looked at Australia here, the country of Australia is larger than the continent. All right, so let's practice our continents again. Upper left-hand corner is Antarctica. The next one would be South America. The next one is 
North America. There's this backwards F. Africa. Europe. There's the mama kangaroo and the joey. Australia and the Asian butterfly. Asia. All right. Thanks for paying attention. You guys have a wonderful day. And uh, I will see you soon.